Hi everyone, Joshua Fletcher here with DS Layered. Uh, another video for you today. This one's going to be quite a short one. I just wanted to provide a tip on connecting to um, your Amazon instances if you're using that for HANA or even for business objects uh, or any other um, type of application. Um, one of the things with Amazon that I uh, guess a little frustrating is every time you start or stop your instance, you get a new IP. So we can see here I'm logged on to Amazon. Uh, if I look at my HANA instance, I've got uh, an IP of 122.248, etc. And my business object server here, uh, which are both running, this one's 54.251. And that changes every time I start the instance. Now, the Amazon provided way of uh, working with this is using Elastic IPs, but you are charged for that uh, whenever you're not running the instance. And if you're doing development work, then you might not be running it uh, for days at a time. So I'm using a service called Dynamic DNS. And what that does is effectively it updates uh, um, one DNS entry uh, with your new IP every time it happens. So this website's uh, din.com slash DNS. Uh, and because I use this service, um, I use a lot of different uh, websites and applications, I found it's actually more cost effective for me to pay $25 a year uh, and maintain my own list of DNS entries. And you can create your own uh, here. So this is my logon account. And uh, you can see here, I've got one called br4.dindnsserver.com for my business object server. Every time my business object server starts up, it automatically registers the IP. And so I can connect to this one every time knowing it'll go straight through to my Amazon instance. Um, for Windows, it works really easy. Fortunately for Linux, it's not that easy. And uh, I've been playing with it a while and, and been a bit frustrated by it. And I finally, finally arrived at a solution that's really simple. And so I wanted to work, walk you through it today. First of all, though, let's just show that connecting to my uh, business object system here. Um, and I'll just make it full screen. So I'm just calling this BR4 DIN DNS server. Um, if we go back over here, you can see the IP. That's the actual IP that we're connecting to. If I connect here, I'll chuck in my password. And you'll see it's opened up uh, onto my business object server. Um, down here is my little updater client, DNS. here you go. So if we just double click that, um, as I said, the Windows client's really simple. You basically stick in your username and password, um, tick which host you want to use, uh, and then effectively every time you start the machine, this will start up and uh, update that DNS entry with the new IP. Simple. All right, now let's look over uh, to um, Linux. So the first thing is hopefully you've already figured out how to do SSH connections uh, to your HANA system. Um, here is one uh, developer edition I've started up. Um, I'm just going to do a remote connection to that. So we're just going to right click and say connect. Um, you need to specify the uh, PEM file, the private key. So I'm going to be logging in as root and here's the location of my PEM file. We'll launch the SSH client and we're going to run this time. So I've narrowed down the steps. Uh, to do this really simply. Um, first of all though, let's just flick over to here and I'm just going to update my host for HANA um, with a bogus IP so we can actually see it's working. So we'll just set it to 111 and save the changes. And you can see that's now updated. All right. So let's go back to Linux here. We'll just make the screen a bit bigger. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to a folder called, and I'm going to put these instructions in the blog post as well, uh, in a D. Uh, and I'm going to uh, um, edit a file called DNS. Okay, um, so now let's paste in the code that you'll have in your blog, which you might not have. So let's paste in the code which you will have in the um, um, file I've provided. So for some reason it cuts this off, so I'm just going to update this with those new details, and that should be a bit of a begin. So effectively, these are some startup, um, uh, it's a startup file we're adding, and this uh, startup part here is all necessary, but effectively the only thing we want to run is this, uh, but we have to provide all that other stuff. So it's basically saying make sure the network's available, um, the run level of the system, so when the operating system's starting up, what, what levels are starting up, um, <clears throat> all that stuff is required, 
You then specify here your user, path, and domain. So um, my username is geek to live and I'm going this um, host name. Of course, I'm not going to show you my password. But effectively, really well, uh, really nicely, is you can just run this wget pass into the DNS um, URL, your username, password, and domain, and it'll update. Really simple. So I'm just going to um, save that. I'll just make sure that's uh, been saved properly by doing a cat statement. So yeah, that all looks good. So what are we going to do next? We just need to make this file um, executable. So I'm going to call it uh, I'll do a chmod to that. Great. Um, now what we can do is run a check statement. So we're going to go to check config um, of our DNS, make sure that's all okay. And you can say, yeah, that's all fine. Um, this is just warnings. Uh, and then what we're going to do is just try it out. So we'll do a start. Um, and you can see there that um, obviously it's not liked my secret password, which is okay, but otherwise it's all worked fine. So the authorization failed. Great. So the only thing left to do now, because um, that would work if I had updated my password, is to actually do a, uh, create a link file from that DNS entry into our run level five statement. I uh, have been learning about this today, so I didn't know this <laughs> at the start of the day. Um, so we're going to just put at the end of that uh, run level five entry is going to be called S S99 DIN DNS. Um, create that entry, make sure it's all fine. Awesome. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually restart uh, my server. Um, so I've just updated uh, the uh, DIN DNS file with my password. So now we're going to actually restart the server. So just to make sure uh, we're not faking, let's just go back and refresh this host page. Make sure it's still set to 1111. And you can see it's still set there. So let's go back over to EC2 now, and I'm just going to stop that instance. So that's now stopped, and what I'm going to do now is actually start it back up. I just wanted to stop and start it so it gets a different IP. Okay, so that's now up and running. You can see here we've got a new IP of 46137. Let's just go back to here and refresh that page. And you can see that IP is now being, that host name is now being updated with our new IP. So what does that actually mean from an end user perspective? Well, let's just connect to our business week server. Here at work, we've got a firewall that blocks port 30015, so I can't connect directly to HANA from my laptop, but I can connect from my business objects Amazon server. So we'll just double check that. I'm going to open up Hannah Studio and I want to uh, add a new system and we're going to use a host name that I've specified there and yep and add in and you can see we've connected to it um, and it's even though it's saying it's a different uh, IP uh, we can connect and every time the uh, HANA server gets up, um, restarted and the IP changes, that host name will get updated uh, and we'll be able to still dynamically reconnect to that server. So I should also point out that there is a different way to do this. Um, dynamic DDS, dynamic uh, DNS do provide an updater. So if we just go to the website here, um, they do provide uh, an updater for, window, for Windows that update clients. Um, there is an open source one, so you can download that one there. There is an open source one uh, for Linux called DD Client. I spent ages trying to get this working, and because there's not a yum uh, installer on the HANA box, couldn't get it to work without mucking around really deeply with Linux. So I just went this really quick and easy route, and the developer forums on Amazon pointed out this nice, quick way of updating Dynamic DNS. So I hope that's useful. Definitely for Windows machines, you should really check it out. It's really straightforward. But even for um, the HANA server, uh, it definitely helps being able to connect. Thanks for listening, and I will see you next time. This podcast is hosted and sponsored by EV Technologies. Visit us on the net at savethecms.com. Can't trust that.
Beastly!